Hello and welcome to this new Construct 3 tutorial on working with nested timelines. So let's go. What we're going to do is add a new sprite to the project and let's give it a nice color like that. And we're going to add a timeline to move this sprite from the left to the right. So we add a new timeline. Here it is. Timeline 1, you can see it in the projects bar. We take this sprite and we drop it in there. We're going to move it from the left to the right, so we're going to lose the x, uh, the y coordinate. Excuse me. This particular animation, du its duration is 5 seconds. You can see that uh, by the um, a green uh, bar here at the 5 second marker. And that's fine. We're going to edit the timeline press the pencil marker and then move it to the other side of the layout here the viewport I'm using the shift key to make it uh, exactly straight and that's fine we move the marker to the five seconds and we set keyframes and that does exactly what we want so fine I'm stop editing the timeline and let's add uh, another sprite and this time let's make it a sphere something like that and let's make it a little smaller and we're going to make a new timeline to make this sphere go up and down so we insert a new timeline and here we see it timeline number two and we will add this sphere here to that timeline so since it's going up and down we're going to lose the x coordinate um, but instead of uh, making the length five seconds we're going to make the length only one second so it goes up and down in time span of one second so let's animate that we click the pencil to go to the edit mode we make it go up again I'm using the shift key to make it a straight line and at the half second point we set a keyframe and then we go back down and at the one second point we set a keyframe again we can just double click here uh, of click or click the um, keyframe here this little uh, block and then you can see the properties of the keyframe and we see that the value is minus one so it's not exactly fallen to zero but we can manually ad adjust the value and then uh, we set it to zero so that's perfect let's see what it does that's exactly what we want all right so let's see how that looks like in the when running this um, application Sorry, we each knew first we need to uh, add an object type timeline and on start of layout we can play all the timelines. See what that looks like. That's it. Okay, fine. Uh, so now we want that uh, ball to go up and down at exactly the one second marker so not from the start but when the first timeline hits the one second marker in order to do that you can uh, add a timeline in a timeline so a nested timeline you can do it here in more actions timeline add timeline and here you see timeline two of course you don't see timeline one because you cannot add a timeline to itself and there we go and you can see all the frames, the keyframes of that timeline. And you can just drag the entire timeline along. So let's add it here to the one second marker. And see what that looks like. That's it. That's what we want. So instead of playing all, I will be using play one. Play timeline one. 
So if at runtime we check what's, what's going on, we can just see and there we have it on the one second marker it moved up. That's great. Let's spice it up a bit. We can also give this sphere a pin behavior. So let's do that. And on the event sheet, let's uh, pin the sphere to the other sprite, but only on the X uh, axis. The result will be that the ball will go along with the square and at the one second marker it will go up. Cool. So now the next question that may arise is can we add timeline 2 another time so it can go up again at the three second marker for example. Twice in the same master timeline let's call it that way. Well if we add a new timeline, you can see that it is invalid. Timeline is already nested in the target, so you can't click the second target, the second timeline again. But we can do a little fix. Let's add a new timeline, and the only thing we're going to do in that new timeline is add timeline 2. And we're going to start it right away and make the third timeline also one second and if we do that we can go to timeline one again add timeline three and we add that to the three second interval and there we go and that should have the desired effect go up and go up again so now whenever we change something to timeline 2, for example, we would drag this over like that, for example, that should be reflected in both instances or in both uh, nested timelines. There we have it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.